Good morning. This is uh, Monday, May 31st, and I'd like to begin by wishing Laura Goodwin a happy birthday. Laura, hope you have a good day. Go out and do something nice for yourself and enjoy Lexi and Mom's uh, fellowship together. Today's devotion is Put God First. This is John 2. Jesus did not com commit himself to them, for he knew what was in man. Put trust, put our trust in God first. Our Lord never put his trust in any person, yet he was never suspicious, never bitter, never lost hope for anyone because he put his trust in God first. He trusted absolutely in what God's grace could do in others. If I put my trust in human beings first, the end result will be my despair and hopelessness towards everyone. I will become bitter because I have insisted that people be what no person can ever be, absolutely perfect and right, as I think they should be. Never trust anything in yourself or in anyone else except the grace of God. Put God's will first. Behold, I have come to do your will, O Father, as Hebrews 10. A person's obedience is to what he sees to be a need. Our Lord's obedience was to the will of his Father. The rallying cry today is, we must get to work. The heathen are dying without God. We must go and tell them about him. But we must first make sure that God's needs and his will in us personally are being met. Jesus said, tarry until you are endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit from on high. That's Luke 24. The purpose of our Christian training is to get us into right relationship to the needs of God and his will. Once God's needs in us have been met, he will open the way for us to accomplish his will, meeting his needs everywhere. In other words, we'll go and do the will of God in whatever situation he calls us to go and do. We can get so amped up that we run ahead of what God would have us do and do things that he's not asking us or needing us to do at the moment. Put God's Son first. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me, Matthew 18. God came as a baby, giving and entrusting himself to me and to you. He expects my personal life to be a Bethlehem for Jesus. Am I allowing my natural life to be slowly transformed by the indwelling life of the Son of God? God's ultimate purpose is that his son might be exhibited in me. And the challenge I have for us today is do the people around us, the people nearest to us, do they see Jesus in how we live? Does your husband see Jesus in how you live? Does your wife, do your children, do your friends and family, do your neighbors, do your co-workers, do they see Jesus in how we live? I'd also like to wish my, my uh, sister-in-law, Polly Lacombe, a happy birthday. I meant to put you at the top of the paper, and I just forgot, so happy birthday, Polly. Let somebody see Jesus in you today for your birthday. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you, uh, you desire to have us have a full understanding of your will for our lives before we go and do. That we would meet the needs, your needs, in what we're going to do and not run out ahead of you. So, Father, the question is today, he asks us, do the folks around us see Jesus in how we live? And that's our prayer today, Lord, that everybody around us would see Christ in all that we do. So lead us today, Father, and guide us as you would see the need. Let us not run ahead, and in the process, may those around us see your Son as we live out the life of, of your Son within us. And we ask these things in his name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.